Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar, Case Beer Conversations. I am Gabriela Cabero. I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders of Case Beer. And I'm really excited today to be joined by Brett Witten, the strategic, uh, the strategic account manager at Engage Live Chat. So welcome, Brett. How's it going? Great to be here. Awesome. Well, today we're talking about converting leads and the common mistakes most law firms make. Uh, you know, Brett and I, we've gotten to know each other over the years. Uh, we obviously, we have some mutual clients. We've, uh, we've talked a lot about intake and marketing and conversions over the years. And we were really excited to bring this conversation to all of you. So feel free to drop questions into the question box. I'll be keeping an eye on that during the webinar and we'll try to get to those. And um, we'll, uh, we'll kind of be going through a, a couple different topics today. I'm excited to grill you, Brett. Let's do it. I'm ready. All right. So the biggest question is, of course, the one we're going to lead with is biggest lead management mistakes that you've seen law firms make over the years. I know I have some to throw in, uh, but I'm uh, curious what your answers would be. So I would say the two biggest that I see are uh, firms that either, I guess you can say it's three, they either wait too long to follow up with a lead. Um, they either give up too easily or um, they they don't use enough avenues to, to follow up. Like some firms, for whatever reason, will only send emails or they'll only call. And you got to you got to know that a lot of these people that are reaching out to you, um, they might be at work where they can't take a phone call. They sure don't want their work email being used, uh, but they can get a text, something like that. So you have to use everything. Um, that's those are the three that I see. Yeah, I mean, I think you you swept them off the table. The one other thing that I would add is, uh, you know, maybe you don't have specialized people handling your lead management. A lot of times at a small firm, yeah. understandably, at some point, an attorney says, hey, it can't be me handling every lead. But, you know, your leads are worth real money. Um, and as much as a receptionist is amazing and really good at their job, they're not necessarily the same skill set as having someone that's specialized in, you know, bringing your leads on board and converting them. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear a lot where either uh, it happens a lot with uh, smaller firms where an attorney just has to handle all the incoming leads and these guys get so bogged down with court or whatever they're doing where they're missing phone calls or they they can't get back to the person within five ten minutes like you need to so if you ever get to that point where you can't you or somebody within your office can't call back a lead back during reasonable hours within a few minutes, then you kind of need to reevaluate and find somebody that you can dedicate that job to. But also one thing I was going to say is uh, with a lot of these, I've, I've had a lot of firms that have talked to me about how they, uh, they'll they have like a cell phone or something that they pass around, mm -hmm. uh, say week to week, um, which is a, a good idea for fielding calls after hours. But a lot of them are now giving kind of a, like a, a bonus or like a little incentive because it, you give that to a salaried mm -hmm. salaried employee they have no real incentive to to go hustle at 11 p.m when mm -hmm. maybe they would with a little incentive given to them that's a really interesting point the one other thing too that i i love to highlight is that's where technology helps bridge the gap too that you might use an intake software or case beer you know we have texting mm -hmm. built in where you can text that client and anyone can be texting that client it doesn't just have to be one person they can be texting you photos of their injuries their accidents coming right in but they've got to be on it quickly. I mean, if you don't call that lead back or you're not communicating with them in their favorite communication avenue, uh, like you were saying, they're going to scroll out down to the next website because they haven't been able to engage with you. Yeah, and I, there's a there's a lot of stats out there on this, but the most common that I see is that uh, the average person contacts between four and five law firms before they uh, before they make a decision. So. If that 
number three or four is calling them back within two minutes or even say while they're chatting in or something, I mean, they can sign them up right there on the phone and you never even have a shot if you wait an hour or so to call them back. But like lead management or intake software, that kind of helps helps firms not drop the ball as easily on that. So mm-hmm. Definitely be using something like that because it, it'll, it'll remind you plenty. Well, along those lines, uh, this is kind of uh, one of the topics that I was curious what your thoughts are. So why is it important to track website visitors? Um, you know, firms that are joining us today, maybe you are tracking website visitors that you're getting now. Maybe you're not. I hope if you're not, you're, you are you know, start sign up for Google Analytics and make sure that you start to see who's coming to your mm-hmm. website and who's bouncing off because you might not be engaging with people in the right way. Brett, what are your thoughts? Yeah, you definitely need to know who's coming to your site, uh, your bounce rate, how many people are actually coming. But I I would definitely dive deeper than that because um, I work with a lot of firms that they'll just throw money at something like uh, an ad campaign or SEO and then just kind of if it leads start coming in, they just assume it's working. But if you're actually on top of it, you can tell where those leads are coming from. And um, so if something's working, then you know where to put more money. But if you have a, a certain page on your website that's not converting very well, you know where at least uh, to focus your, your attention on solving that issue. But if you're not, you're not tracking it, there's no way you can know and you can just end up wasting a bunch of money and or missing out on a bunch of opportunities that you could have had if you were staying on top of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and even just tracking, uh, getting into specific landing pages, I think is a really good point, Brad. And it's something Mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, I think in our industries, we're doing a lot of that or we should be. And, uh, and law firms aren't necessarily doing that quite yet. Certainly some are, um, but that's something to consider, implementing different landing pages for different campaigns to really identify and hammer down which ones are converting better. Um, and I also just think we might love the way our website looks, but maybe clients aren't. Maybe you're missing out on a, on a percentage of leads that just click right off. Um, and so that's really, really great stats uh, to have at your fingertips. Because yeah. if you don't have data, would, you can't make great decisions. Absolutely. And I, I would say along those lines, uh, a lot, a lot of the guys I work with let personal preference get in the way of what the numbers actually say. Um, mm-hmm. This this goes for a million different things, whether they they don't like the contact form where it is so they they tell their website guy to put it in a certain spot where they think they like it where the numbers say you need the contact form above the fold um with chat graphics um i've had the numbers say that if you use a picture of one of the attorneys at the firm it converts something like 20 to 25 percent higher than having a, a stock image but i've had some guys that just insist on having a, a pretty blonde in the picture even though it converts worse so if you're tracking those those website visitors and you're really on top of your analytics seeing where these conversion acts the conversions are actually coming from whether they're, they're clicking on the call button on mobile or or the the left tab on chat or the actual graphics or whatever then one you know what's actually working what's not but also the numbers typically don't lie. So the guys that are really tapped into their analytics, they don't need me to tell them that, hey, moving the chat graphics from the right to the left is is going to hurt your conversion because they they know that that's what's going to happen. And, and mm-hmm. or they, they're willing to listen to somebody that all they do is pay attention to numbers. <laughs> You're paying attention to where those uh, chat clicks are, uh, are most effective, I know. <laughs> kind of, um, kind of yeah. have to. But I will say for those of you that are starting out and some of this is new, honestly, just getting started in Google Analytics, there's so much data that you will garner. And you might even have analytics installed and maybe you're not using it. And then, of course, some of you are probably joining us and you're in there every day. Uh, So it's definitely a spectrum I see across our case bureau clients and other law firms that I I come in contact with. But 
um, analytics is a great place to start. And then there are a lot of great website tracking tools where they can track mouse clicks and things like that. So you can even do a trial of that for a month or two and get some really great insights on uh, on your law, on your website performance. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like a beast, and it, it can be kind of a beast to learn right off the bat. But once you figure out how to work analytics, it's it's easy, and in the long run, it'll be much better for your firm. Yeah. So, what are some? We talked a little bit about kind of lead management, but what are you know this? It does maybe feel a little repetitive for the conversion, but uh, but. Got, speaking specifically about conversion missteps, and maybe we can take uh, the angle of tracking um, and understanding your conversion rates. What are some common missteps that you see law firms make in that regard? So I would say personal preferences is, is one of those things that I see people mess up a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I talk to guys that um, say during my process of say onboarding a chat client they'll say hey if somebody doesn't want to call me um i don't want them as a lead I'm like well there might be somebody that's at work that can't pick up the phone that would be a great injury case so that going back to personal preference you just have to do whatever it takes to give people as many avenues to contact you as possible but kind of the same way as you need to use all the avenues as possible to follow up on these leads mm -hmm. but yeah i would say that's easy I'm shocked that you still hear that in this day and age. I mean, what are the stats on people's preference of texting or chatting over phone? I mean, it's it goes up every year, people's preference. It doesn't matter if they're at work. I mean, we have a whole generation, right, of, I mean, what Gen Zs, they don't even use the phone anymore. I mean, it's just texting, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, most firms, they'll tell you they, they would rather have a phone call than a contact form or a chat because... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, the call is where it's at. But uh, yeah, there's been a huge shift. Uh, when I first started seven or eight years ago, uh, we were getting about 70% uh, of our chats from desktop and about 30% mobile, and it's completely mm -hmm. flopped. Yeah, so I believe it. it. No, vast majority of people are using mobile, and you kind of have to adapt to that. And presumably the engaged chat, I, I, we haven't talked about this, but it's mobile optimized. You know, if someone does Absolutely. have that on their website, it'll look great on the phone and easy to interact with. Yeah, so one of the things that, that I really like to do on mobile because um, the the, test, the texting is becoming huge with people. They, mm -hmm. Everybody loves texting, but a lot of people see texting as different than from chatting. So what I like to do is put uh, on our graphics on the bottom, put uh, both a chat and a text button. They both go to the same operator, but the visitor sees it as two different things. And to that person that prefers texting that they might not have wanted to pick up the phone, they might not have wanted to do a form or chat, but, oh, hey, I can send a text, even though it's the same thing, you convert somebody that you might have lost otherwise. And for people that uh, might be new to live chat or, or don't know too much about it, you said operator. Is that something, would that be like an engaged live chat operator or is that someone at the firm? Mm -hmm. what, is that, uh, what does that usually look like? So with us, it's one of our operators. We've, we've got about mm -hmm. anywhere between 150 and 200 operators in a call center. So mm -hmm. um, they're fielding chats 24-7, definitely mm -hmm. not giving legal advice, but just trying to convert website visitors into mm -hmm. hopefully opportunities that the firm can close. Yeah, and the one thing that's really neat, again, if any of you are Casebeer users or Casebeer clients, you can connect. We do have an integration with live chat. So those leads, once they generate that lead, it also pops into Casebeer. So you can open it up, convert it into a case, making that really easy. Um, and then you can start aggressively following up and tracking through Casebeer and texting them or whatever you need to do uh, to, to sign that client, yeah, trigger the e-signature from there and, and all that. Yeah, I'm sure you've you've heard from your clients that once they once they sign up, the the amount of legwork they're having to do on the back end with manually entering these leads and trying to keep mm -hmm. up with all the follow ups on on their end is it, it gets a lot easier when you use something like Casebeer. It, it 
It does. And I mean, the one thing too that uh, that I hear from other lead management tools, and I know we've talked about this, that you guys love when people are using case management software, right? Because there's nothing worse than you're sending and generating these leads and then someone, you're working with a firm that maybe doesn't have the insight over, uh, over what's happening with those leads. And so they'll come back to you and say, ah, you sent me a bunch of leads that weren't really that great. Um, and having the insight is critical. I mean, it all comes down back down to that, that element of data. Yeah, that, they can't, uh, can't tell you how much fun it is to hear somebody, uh, you, you send these what look like great leads and they tell you not, no one signed up and you start asking questions. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, I called once and emailed once and I didn't have time to do anything else. And I'm just like, well, you had some intake software or somebody dedicated to do this you wouldn't mm -hmm. you'd be signing up more people because it you're giving up that easily you're you're wasting a lot of really good leads like for instance it, if a if a go ahead oh i was just gonna it's an investment right your software yep. a dedicated person think about how much people are spending on advertising or on optimizing their website i mean it, it's just a it's a marketing expense at the end of the day yeah, so I have a, an example that I, I love using whenever I have a firm that's telling me basically that they're giving up on these leads too easy. And I mean, this kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier. Um, uh, so for example, if a lead comes in off the Engage site, um, sorry if uh, you don't like this, but I'm gonna call you and email you and I'm not gonna give up until I've touched that lead until at least 10, maybe 12 times. Um, I'll even text because the way, I mean, there's a lot of data out there on this. You've paid for that lead to come through your site, whether it's SEO ads, whatever. And they, at some point wanted to be contacted. So at, at the very least they can say no, but the, the bigger example, uh, we have a sister company called ice, uh, intake conversion experts, but this was three or four years ago when they were first getting started. Um, they, in a way to kind of prove themselves, they went to this, this bigger PI firm. And I, I believe this was in early 2018. Um, they had this firm give them all their, their dead leads from 2017. Mm -hmm. It ended up being a little over a thousand leads. And these are leads that the firm had paid for through TV ads, everything. And they ended up signing up around 200 of those. These are leads <sighs> that completely gave up on, just dead money. Uh, and that wow. kind of proof of what what you're giving up on if you if you don't try to contact these people enough. Mm -hmm. That's extraordinary. I love that. And the ICE team is is really good. They uh, they have a great reputation in yeah. the industry for sure. Wasn't meant to yeah. be a, an ad for ICE, but <laughs> good example. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is. It's follow up, follow up, follow up. Right. There's uh, there's a lot to be yep. said about that. Um, so what, what are best practices for bridging the gap between leads and retained clients? Um, I, I'm curious in particular, cause I think Engage is, is helping now with, with some of this, right? Or you guys have some extra services? Yeah, so we're actually, um, it, it's still in the works, but mm -hmm. we're pretty excited about, um, we've found a way to integrate DocuSign in with the chat. Mm -hmm. So um, basically we'll field the chat, convert the person like normal. And if, if it looks to the operator, like it's, it's actually going to be a, a potentially uh, a good injury case or an injury case at all. Um, we'll load up a few more questions. We'll say, Hey, we might be able to help you. Uh, would you mind answering some additional questions, some qualifying mm -hmm. questions basically. And if the person answers all of those, right. Questions like, have you retained an attorney already? Did, Mm -hmm. uh, was the injury, did it require hospitalization? Was it within the last year? Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, we'll say, hey, we think you have a case. Would you mind signing our retainer? And that's kind of the same idea as um, if you have somebody on the phone, try to get them to sign right there rather than trying to chase them around, give them a chance to go contact other people. Mm -hmm. um, that's Stuff like that is the easiest way to bridge that gap between leads and retained clients. I can't tell you how many times I, I don't need to, probably don't need to tell you guys that you can get somebody on the phone and 
sell yourself like crazy and they sound like they're a done deal and then you never get them on the phone again. Yeah. I mean, we hear that from firms all the time, right? It's sort of a, uh, every, anyone who specializes in, t in intake, sometimes they just, they go MIA and you call and call and call for a couple of days. And it may be if you've been able to sign them while you were on the phone, whether it's, or within the chat, um, that makes all the difference. I mean, I know with Case Spear, we have firms that'll go in and they're talking to someone, they'll send that trigger, that e-signature request, they'll watch it come in, they'll walk them through the retainer over the phone. And that's still on the same phone call. Cause again, they picked up, they want an attorney, right? This is, I think that it's about being aggressive. People are reaching out, whether it's on chat or by phone or any other way that leads, uh, leads are coming into your firm they want to hire someone in this PI space. Um, and they, you know, you want to be, hopefully now you've one of the four to five firms they've reached out to and you want to close them and close them on that yep. first touch. That's a, uh, that's really exciting. So that's something that's not, not live yet, but will be soon by the sound of it. Uh, hopefully sooner than later, we've been doing okay. some testing and it's, it's been working, but that's I, I was really going to say exciting. one thing that, that also, yeah, we're, we're super excited about it because, I mean, if we can make that happen and get somebody signed up before they even leave the chat, then that's, that could mm -hmm. be a game changer. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to say, uh, one thing that also I, I know a lot of firms are doing now that, that helps, uh, I guess, I guess you could say um, helps the, the trust, I guess, with, with mm -hmm. the, the person that's reached out whenever you go to, uh, you go to reach out via text for a follow-up. Um, there's a couple of services. I know one of them is Zip Whip. Um, mm -hmm. think, think of the others, but they basically make the firm's uh, main phone number. Uh, I don't even know if this is a real word, but textable. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you've got oh, one of those neat. really nice vanity numbers, mm -hmm. yeah, like the, the repeaters, and they know they've reached out to Joe Law Firm, and they have one of those mm -hmm. really nice, easy to remember numbers, and they get a text from that number that looks a lot more legitimate and you're, you're going to mm -hmm. get a response a lot easier because of that. Yeah, that's a good, uh, that's a really good point. Um, you know, especially uh, that building that trust from that first interaction is really key. Um, the other thing that I think is, is important. I, I want to touch on not to talk about case beer too much, but I, I do think that that onboarding experience for that client. So however you've signed them, making sure that you have a very timely follow up from your, whether it's your case manager, your assistant or the attorney, as soon as they are converted into a client, the sooner that you can make that touch and start, um, start bringing them into the firm, the better, because don't forget that they do have those touches on four or five other attorneys. And if you've maybe retained them on a Friday and, you know, that's not to say you've got to work through the weekend, but making sure you're putting the appropriate follow-ups in place um, so that you're not waiting till when Monday afternoon, because they've probably gotten a couple calls over the weekend. And uh, if you go too quiet, you know, they don't, it's very easy to, to, go over and sign another CFA and, and be working with another firm. Um, and so case yeah. management software can definitely help with that. Yeah. At the very least, you need to be sending a, at least an email or a text saying, Hey, mm -hmm. I got your info. I'll be in touch. Cause mm -hmm. just that little bit of a message can keep somebody from reaching out to another firm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, Oh, Fred, sorry. Do you have something to add to, to prior? No, I was, yeah, just something I thought of uh, that kind of going back to something I learned a few years ago. Um, I was going to say when you're when you get these people on the phone and you're trying to trying to gain that trust to where they actually want to sign with you, you kind of have to feel it out. But don't be afraid to um, to be a real person and make a connection with them because there are some people out there that all they care about is your accolades, how much money you can get them, how successful you are, whatever. But there's also some people that this kind of goes to website conversion as well. Like when they're looking at your bio, um, some, some people, they want to feel some sort of connection to who they're going to be contacting and working with. So if they read that uh, you're a fan of the same basketball team that they are, that you, you like some of the same things they do. Um, it, it can kind of help warm them up a little bit and make them feel that personal connection to where they actually want to call you versus if all they see are just awards, 
they might not feel that and they're going to go to the next guy that they actually have something in common with. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I mean, that, right, we all probably know that intuitively that the best sales rep is someone that you can get along with and that you like. People like to buy things and to hire people to do things for them that they like. And so that really also kind of ties to what we started with initially is having a dedicated intake person. It really is a sales job. Um, Again, whether that's an attorney or it's an intake person that you can route that lead to an attorney if they need to, but, um, but having someone that's really going to, to sell your firm to that client. Yep. 100% sales. Yep. Yep. So, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about website lurkers because one of the things that I've really enjoyed talking to you in the past is, uh, the statistics of people that come to websites and that engage with something like engage live chat, that wouldn't have otherwise picked up the phone or even connected. They're just out there to lurk and, uh, and sniff around. And you know, what uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I, I probably should have just saved that for this next slide if I would have <laughs> read for five more seconds. It, that's uh, the the lurkers. That's one of the easiest way to get them is by making sure that you have all the different personalities covered um, whenever. Uh, whenever you're setting up a website and setting up your bio, because like there's people that are mm-hmm. just lurking around and um, they don't know you from the next 20 firms on Google. So there's no real reason for them to reach out. So you kind of have to give them that reason. So like there's people mm-hmm. that um, if there's not a phone number that's easy to find, they're just going to go to the next site. They're just really impatient. There's those people that want to see all your awards. So you put those mm-hmm. real big, verdicts on the the front page but then there's those people that want to connect so make sure they know you're a real person little stuff like that is and having a chat and like a really easy contact form to find and um stuff like that but um those are all things you can easily do to it won't completely fix it but change a lot of those people from lurkers into actual people reaching out to your firm Yeah. So I want to address the elephant in the room. And that is that I think there's a lot of people my age and older that land on a website and you get a chat and you think, oh, where do I find the little X? Right. Um, But the reality is, and this is, I think, something really important that I want everyone to walk away with today is that the data shows that people do engage with chat overwhelmingly. If you're one of those people that have been resistant, uh, I think you should be. But Brett, you obviously can speak to this a lot more uh, in greater detail than I can. Yeah, so that kind of goes back to personal preference. Like I got to talk to a lot of guys mm-hmm. that say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it, so why would I want it on my website? And I'm kind of in that same boat. Like if I go to a website, I'm picking up the phone. I'm not the type to use the mm-hmm. chat. But the data says that people are using the chat for whatever reason, whether it's their personal preference to uh, a a way to communicate or um, they're just, they're at work and they want to air out their business. Or um, I see it a lot with divorce firms that um, Mm -hmm. they've got the husband in the next room and they don't want him to hear her on the phone. So stuff like that. Um, Mm -hmm. You just, you have to give your visitors as many avenues as possible to reach out. And by not having, it doesn't have to be engaged any chat you're you're kind of mm-hmm. shooting yourself in the foot because mm-hmm. um there's a lot of those people that would not have filled out a form or would have not not have called that probably would have engaged through a chat so people shouldn't be hesitant to get the chat to pop up after whatever is it typically like five seconds on the side or something like that the chat pops up it's usually around 10. Um, we don't use okay. a big pop-up anymore because Google really mm-hmm. doesn't like that. Um, okay. Last thing we want to do is hurt anybody's Google rankings. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, the numbers say that, I mean, you're, you're going to get your majority of your leads from calls if you're, if you're doing it right. Um, but contact forms and chats are pretty similar in conversion rates. So mm-hmm. um, typically with Engage, uh, what I'll say is, if a firm, if I'm talking to somebody and they're thinking about chat, they're say they get about 20 contact forms a month. I would say without having 
engage on your site, you're missing out on about 20 additional leads. So it's, mm-hmm. it's a pretty significant change at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you guys have a lot of great stats on that. So uh, if anyone is interested, I know they'll be able to reach out to you and we'll share your contact information at the end. Yeah. Um, this again, it all comes down, that. it all comes down to numbers. So one of the things that I have heard in the past, because, you know, at Casebeer, I talk to people that are solo firms that are starting out all the way through some of the largest firms in the country. And I do think there's sort of this perception that live chat is just for big firms or people have told me, ah, I'm not like, I don't need that yet. I, I'm not big enough or I'm just getting all my business from referrals. So I don't need it. Um, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Who's live chat for? So I would say live chat is for anybody, anyone that's actually driving traffic to their site. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. if you're solo or you have 25 attorneys. We, we do have a, a bunch of firms that, that are all over TV and they're spending a hundred grand a month mm-hmm. on ads. Yes, obviously for them. But if you're a solo guy that you're not trying to dominate a huge market, but you're getting a couple hundred visitors a month, that's four or five chats that you could be getting that... Mm-hmm get enough of those over the course of the year you sign up a few extra injury clients and you can actually start building your firm like that so Mm -hmm. yeah if you're if you have any sort of website traffic and you don't have a chat it's like it's like leaving a window open and running the ac you're you're losing some sort of lead and the one thing i'll say to that is you're talking about uh driving uh, content or driving visitors to your website. And some people might think, oh, does that mean mm-hmm. I have to have a budget on paid advertising? Or does that mean I need to be investing on Avo? I mean, if you have a website, theoretically, if you're adding pages, adding a new blog post every once in a while, you are working to drive traffic to your site. And those might be missed opportunities. And uh, and that's, uh, that's one thing too that, um, Uh, that brings us back to what we kind of started with is why it's so important to track the visitors. Because if you're getting 10 visitors a month and half of them are you and the other half are your mom, you might not be ready for live chat yet. But if you've got, you know, even a hundred, that could be leads you're leaving on the table. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, Mm -hmm. I I say there's a huge difference between no traffic and a little bit of traffic because a little bit of traffic can be converted. If you have zero visitors, um, or yeah, it's just your mom checking you out because she missed you. <laughs> Probably have bigger, bigger uh, fish to fry than live chat. I will say if you, I mean, not to do a shout out to a prior webinar, but we've got it on YouTube. Uh, great conversation I had with uh, Guy Sakalakis from Attorney Sync last month. Um, and so if you are one of those in that five to 10 range, or if you want to go from 100 to 300 uh, or 3000, lots of great tips on there um, and um, for him of where to get started and, you know, how to get to. Uh, how to grow your your presence online without uh, breaking the bank. So check that one out too. Yeah, and, um, and uh, I would say uh, uh, posting the link to your website and having all your, uh, on Facebook and having all your Facebook friends visit does not count. Mm-hmm. Yes, and especially because they're- I don't think Google's gonna like it. No, they're gonna hop on, they're gonna hop right off and Google's gonna think you did something malicious. So yeah, I agree, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, as tempting as it might be. Uh, for sure. So I want to, yeah, I want to ask you, Brett, what are some questions? Obviously there's lots of live chat companies out there. There's a couple that are really good. Engage of course is one of those. It's top of the class. Um, what are some questions that people should be asking or thinking about when they're evaluating live chat options? So I would say, first off, you need to figure out what you want the chat for because, Mm -hmm. um, Engage is more of a, a conversion minded chat. We're in there. We're not there to, to talk to people to give answer questions about your, uh, your case, anything like that. We're there to convert as many leads as humanly possible for the firm to try to sign up. There are chats out there that, um, that you can monitor on your own that are, I would say, are more um, more customer service based, like uh, like something you would see on maybe an AT&T website or a car dealership where you can answer pricing, stuff like that. Um, if if you're looking for more of a con- customer service based chat, um, I'd be happy to give you a couple ideas. But I would say I've seen some firms have a lot of success with that if they uh, 
because you can use that for a conversion as well, but you have to dedicate an employee to the chat because if somebody gets on there mm -hmm. and they you don't answer within 10 or 15 seconds, that person's gone. They don't pick up the phone, they're just mm -hmm. gone because they had a bad experience. So um, I like to call those customer service chats, but I, there are some bigger firms that I've seen that will dedicate staff to that and it, it can work for conversion. Um, but on the conversion side, I would say, um, because I'll be honest with you, Engage is, we're probably the most expensive on the market. So mm -hmm. you have to figure out what you're looking to get out of the chat. So if you just want a chat tool that can get you a few extra leads that you don't want to pay top dollar for, there's a bunch of chats out there that'll do that. Um, you guys go with Engage because it's, they know that you kind of get what you pay for. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say if you're, you're going for a conversion chat and you either, if you have a, a chat on your site already, um, split test it. Um, mm -hmm. it, there's nothing wrong with that. You can't really lose anything in a couple of months running a test to make sure you, you have what you absolutely want. If you don't have any experience with chat, um, you either don't just go with the first thing you find because it's, mm -hmm. it's cheap or whatever but also don't go with the most expensive thing you find because that sounds awesome anyway. Test mm -hmm. it. Uh, sign up with one mm -hmm. for a couple months. Uh, like say, if, you, if you've got a, another chat on your site right now and you wanted to ch test Engage, uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't charge you anything to set it up because I want you to test it. So um, mm -hmm. most of the chats out there, I think, would be very happy to, to let you run a test and because just let the numbers do the talking. I like that. No, I think that's really important. And I think there's a lot of fear, obviously, like, hey, I'm not going to, like Case Beer, we're month to month. We want to earn your trust every month. Um, being able to uh, to try something out without a three-year commitment is uh, is always important. And then, um, of course, and, you know, I know it's really important for companies to to keep evolving. And, and I know Engage is certainly doing that and updating technology and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that goes goes back to kind of what we were talking about with like the, the website visitors monitoring all that. Mm -hmm. The more you test, like I, I'd say if you're not split testing something or running some sort of test on pretty much everything you're using, um, mm -hmm. at least like once a year or so, then you can easily get left behind. So mm -hmm. <laughs> test, test, test. Well, we, and we see that of course on the case management side, right? Just cause something's been working for your firm for five years. Is it really, uh, or is it the only thing that you know? I mean, it's always good to keep an eye on what's out there and um, and not necessarily be afraid to to take a look, do a demo, or or you know embrace some change. Um, so I wanted to give you an opportunity to to share a little bit about what makes Engage Live Chat special, because again, I you know there's a couple others out there. There's ones that you know Case Beer. We again we have great relationships with other companies out there as well. But, uh, but again, there's things that make Engage uh, engage. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? So I always say um, having a live chat on your site, whether it's Engage or not, is better than no chat. Um, mm -hmm. I'd say the biggest thing that makes Engage special is our conversion rate. Um, we've tested against literally every chat out there, um, which is why I'm more than happy to, if anybody's using another chat, to go up against them. Um, we're usually converting anywhere from double to triple uh, the leads of all the other chats, which is why we're expensive. Um, I'd say the main difference. reason for that is yeah, it can be, especially with PI cases. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you talk about a, the difference of a, 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 an extra case or two a month, that's usually more than covers any cost difference. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just because we're, we do so much split testing. I, at any given time, we're running five to 10 different split tests because we, we're on about nine, eight to 9,000 websites right now. And um, so we're able to do a lot of really broad split testing because we have a, a really big data group within that. And so we're always testing little tweaks in the script, little graphics tweaks, uh, like the, what I mentioned earlier, the, uh, putting the attorney in the picture versus a stock. That was something that mm -hmm. a client just came to us one day and said, hey, can you use my picture? We never thought of it, and it'll be in a huge bump. So a little mm -hmm. stuff like that, we're always split testing because it's, it's 
to our advantage to to convert as as high as humanly possible. So uh, we're mm-hmm. always trying to always trying to make it better, and then get stuff like the uh, like I mentioned with the uh, the case signups that I, I think are going to be pretty mm-hmm. huge, being able to deliver retainers through the chat. That's uh, that's really exciting. I mean, anything that can make it easier to streamline that uh, that signed CFA makes a huge difference. Yeah. Um, we well, would, we would load that retainer into Case Beer. Yeah, I know. Well, when you guys have that, we'll uh, you let me know, and we'll uh, we'll make sure we we connect those things. We'll we'll set up the teams to talk. I love that cool. idea. Yeah. Well, look, Brett, thank you so much for being here with me today. It's so fun to talk to you always. And I'm just really glad that we've been able to share your okay. insights with our audience. Uh, what's the easiest way for people to get a hold of you? So uh, my email right on the screen or uh, type in my, uh, my cell in the chat. Perfect. Make sure that's the right number. Yep. So Feel free to give me a shout or uh, send me an email. I'm happy to go over any of the, if you're not using a chat, uh, the conversion stats of what firms typically see before and after. If you're using another chat, doesn't really matter which one. Happy to set up the test and uh, like I said, let those numbers do the talking. Awesome. Well, Brett, thank you so much. I'm sure we'll have you back for future uh, conversations, uh, maybe next year. Um, And I'm sure I'll be seeing you uh, probably in the next few months uh, at some uh, legal event, which I look forward to. It's nice the world's opening back up. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. It's been such a pleasure to be here with you guys. Uh, Keep an eye out for future uh, conversations, uh, webinars, and we look forward to, uh, to seeing you at the next one. Bye, everyone. Take care.